Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Andy in the Seattle Symphony, and today we're going to talk about the violin. The violin is a member of the string family, which also includes the viola, the cello, and the double bass. The violin is primarily made out of wood, and it has four strings that are made out of metal. And I also have a bow, and when I draw the bow across the strings, it makes sound. I don't always have to use my bow to make sound. I can also use my finger and I can do something called pizzicato, which means to pluck or to pick the string. I can even pitz more than one string at a time to play chords. Sometimes I have to do both. See if you can catch where I play pizzicato and arco in this next section. Violin is my favorite instrument, and it's super well known for playing these beautiful melodies. Here's one of them now.
I want to talk a little bit more about how we bring these beautiful melodies to life. And one of the ways we do that is through the use of slides. You might notice that unlike a guitar, which has frets, the violin does not. There are no lines that go across the fingerboard that help us play certain notes. And because of that, we spend a lot of the time practicing in the practice room, figuring out exactly where these, our fingers need to go to play the right notes. Just the little bit millimeter off can mean the difference between a note being in tune and out of tune. But because there are no frets, we are able to freely slide in between notes. And that is a great expressive tool. I'll play two versions of the same song, one with outslides and one with, and hopefully you can see the difference that the slides create. And now here's a version with the slides. Slides are a great tool used especially in jazz. So here's a little jazzy song that I like to play and see if you can see all the places that I add little slides in to make the music come to life. So I started playing violin when I was five years old. Here's a picture of me. When I first started violin, I played a lot of the songs that a lot of you probably would recognize. Songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb, Hot Cross Buns, Happy Farmer, Twinkle Twinkle. Through a lot of hours of practice, my fingers got stronger and I was able to play songs that were a little bit more difficult. And I kept practicing and now I can play songs that are really technically difficult. Here's an example. Before we leave today, I'd like to take this time to answer a few commonly asked questions that I usually get. The first one is, when I first started playing violin, was my violin this big? And the answer to that is no. They're actually violins for kids get much, much smaller than this. And when I first started, I started on a quarter size violin, which is probably about this big. Another question is if you are right hand or left handed, do you hold the violin differently? The answer to that is actually also no. Regardless of if you're left or right handed, you usually hold the violin in your left hand and then you hold the bow in your right hand. On rare exceptions though, I have heard of people learning to play violin with the hands switched, but that's not usually very common. 
The last question is, what is my favorite kind of music to play? And that's a really difficult one to answer because there are so many different styles of music that I really, really love. I grew up trained as a classical violinist, but I listen to all sorts of different styles of music. And recently I've been really getting into a style called gypsy jazz, which was popularized by a great French violinist named Stéphane Grappelli. And I'd like to leave you guys with one of his songs, his arrangement of Honeysuckle Rose. Thanks again for joining me today. Goodbye for now, thanks for joining, and be sure to tune in every week to learn about the different instruments of the Seattle Symphony. Hi, I'm Sarah from the Seattle Symphony's Education and Community Engagement Team. I hope you enjoyed Andy's video today all about the violin. I'm here to help you make your very own violin at home. Parents, there's a link to the craft information below. Feel free to pause the video as you gather your supplies, and I'll be here when you're ready to help you put your violin together. Let's make a violin. Here's mine. Start with a paper plate. If you don't have a paper plate, no problem. You can try the same craft with a Tupperware container or even an empty tissue box. Next, Find four strings. Today, our strings will be rubber bands and we'll need four. Then grab something to color your violin. And last, you'll need a popsicle stick or a ruler and some tape to put your violin together. Before you begin, ask your adult helper to help you cut four notches at the top of your plate and four notches at the bottom of your plate so that it looks just like mine. Once that's done, you can color and decorate your violin. When you're done coloring, take your popsicle stick and tape it to the back of your instrument so that it pokes out above one of the notches. All that's left now is to add your strings. Ask your helper to help you put one of your rubber bands in the notch and stretch together until it fits in the notch below. There's your first string. Do this again and again and again until you have four rubber bands going from top to bottom on your instrument. Now it's time to play your violin. Let's put it up to our chins and see how they sound. Hope you have fun making your violin today and we'll see you next time for more instrument crafts.